Okay, so uh, today we'll talk about polynomials acting on matrices. So observe last time when we talked about the application of matrices in counting problems in graph theory, we had occasion to consider powers of a matrix. So if you had a matrix A, then it was natural to look at the matrix A squared, which we just defined to be A times A, or the matrix A cubed, which is a product of the matrix A with itself thrice. Okay, and these remember counted. For instance, A squared would count the number of paths of length 2 in a graph where provided A is the adjacency matrix of the graph, A cubed would count paths of length 3 and so on. Okay, so powers sort of made a natural appearance in counting problems. Now uh, let us do the following, let us also define, so A power 1 of course is just A, let us define A power 0 to be the identity matrix. So what is this if A is an n cross n matrix, so here I am thinking of A as being some n cross n matrix, then uh, the identity matrix here is also of size n cross n, so I will denote it by I n, this just refers to the matrix with 1s along the diagonal, zeros everywhere else and having size n cross n, okay. So the 0th power of matrix is defined to be the identity. Now just like we consider powers of a matrix, it is natural to sort of go one step further and consider polynomials in which you plug in a matrix instead of x. So what does this mean? If f of x <coughs> so polynomial in the variable x, for example, let us say f of x is just x squared plus 2x plus 3, then here is what we would, we would do. So let us think of this 3 as just being 3 times x power 0, this is 2 times x power 1. Then if A is a matrix, if A is any n cross n matrix, we can define the following. You plug in A in place of x, so the, 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 the quantity f of A is defined as follows. So here is the definition, you just read off the polynomial but just replace all the x's with a's. So this is now a squared plus 2 times the matrix a plus 3 times, well x power 0, now that should be replaced by a power 0, but a power 0 as I said is just the identity matrix, okay. So the, the quantity f of a is just defined to be a squared plus 2a plus 3i and observe now that this is a matrix again, right, this is once more an n cross n matrix. Okay, so uh, this is sort of the general definition, if you have any polynomial with say x power d plus some uh, multiple of x power d minus 1 and so on, wherever you see uh, x power something, you replace it by the corresponding power of a, okay. So that is how you make a polynomial act on a matrix. And uh, let us just study this to see what sorts of interesting things can come out of it. So here is an example uh, just to see what this definition leads to. Suppose you have the matrix 1, 1, 0, 1, just 2 cross 2. Then uh, what I am going to try is to apply uh, a polynomial on A. So it will be useful to figure out what powers of A look like. So if you compute A squared, you will find that it is 1, 2, 0, 1. A cubed similarly will be, well or more generally A power D will just become this 1D01, okay. So here is something for you to check, check that A power D indeed leads to the matrix 1D01 and so now let us take the same polynomial F, F of X is X squared plus 2X plus 3 and let us plug in this matrix A in place of X. So as we said it is A squared. So A squared is 1, 2, 0, 1 plus 2 times the matrix A which is 1, 1, 0, 1 plus 3 times the identity matrix which is well 1, 0, 0, 1 if you wish. Okay, so all we must do is just add up these 3 matrices and check again that the answer here is 6, 4, 0, 6. Okay, so that is just an example to show how this computation is carried out in general. It will produce some 2 cross 2 matrix. So let us take another example, let us go one dimension higher, let us look at a 3 cross 3 matrix, 
let's take the matrix A, we just have diagonal entries 1, 2 and 3 and zeros everywhere else, it is 3 cross 3. Now, observe if you raise this matrix to the dth power, keep multiplying it with itself d times, all it does is just the diagonal entries become 1 power d which is well 1, 2 power d and 3 power d and the other zeros just remain as it is. So, it is very easy to take powers of diagonal matrices or to multiply diagonal matrices with each other and what does this in particular mean? It is very easy to apply polynomials to a diagonal matrix. So, if f is a polynomial, so here is a nice exercise, exercise check that more generally this is something that I wrote out for the dth power of a, but more generally for any polynomial f for any polynomial f of x, check that if I apply f to a diagonal matrix to this particular diagonal matrix, all it will do is produce another diagonal matrix with diagonal entries f of 1, f of 2 and f of 3. Okay. And the main step of the proof of course, is in using what we just said above that a power d has this form. So, a, a typical polynomial is a, just a sum of powers of a with some coefficients in front. So, if you put them all together, all it will produce is a matrix with diagonal entries f 1, f 2 and f 3. Okay. So, this uh, raises or suggests a very uh, interesting question. Suppose you have here is the example again, if I take this very same matrix A 1, 2, 3 and B another matrix well which can be pretty much any diagonal matrix. Okay. So, let me just take some random numbers. So, it does not matter what numbers I pick here, I just picked a few 3 random numbers 1, 11 and 40, but I could just pick it to be any other matrix B say for instance 11, 11 and 40 or uh, any 3 other numbers that I can think of. Now, here is the problem or question show that there is a polynomial of degree 2 show that there is a polynomial f of degree at most 2 such that when you apply f to the matrix A, it produces the matrix B. Okay. So, here is the problem. Show that by applying a polynomial of degree 2, you can uh, to this diagonal matrix 1, 2, 3, you can make it into the matrix B that is on the right hand side. Okay. And the, the way to go about this is just by using the observation that we just made that when you apply a polynomial to a diagonal matrix, all it does is just apply that polynomial to the 3 diagonal entries. Okay. So, let us try and solve this problem. What is it that we want our, our polynomial f to satisfy? So, f of a remember is just as we just said the diagonal matrix f 1, f 2, f 3 and so what we want is that this should be the matrix B that is given it should equal 1, 11 and 40. In other words, f must be a polynomial whose value at 1, f of 1 must be 1, f of 2 must be 11 and f of 3 must be 40. Okay. So, we are just trying to solve the following 3 constraints. In other words, what we want is a polynomial of degree at most 2 which satisfies f of 1 is 1, f of 2 is 11 and f of 3 is 40. But observe that is exactly what Lagrange interpolation did for us. Okay. So, interpolation is exactly solving uh, for this, this kind of polynomial. If you apply the interpolation procedure, what we would find is a polynomial of degree at most 2, which takes these prescribed values 1, 11 and 40 at these 3 prescribed points 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So, by Lagrange interpolation, you can actually write out the formula for by Lagrange interpolation. actually find such an f. So, such an f exists and in fact, you can also write a nice formula for it such an f 
exists. Okay, so you take that f. That's exactly the f you want. So take that polynomial. F. Okay. So if we sort of just step back and think about what we have just proved for a minute, what we have said is that no matter. So let's come back here. You you fix this particular diagonal matrix A. And observe that there is nothing sacred about 1, 11 and 40. No, you could have picked any 3 numbers y1, y2, y3 and Lagrange interpolation would have allowed us to find a polynomial which has those prescribed values. So, in other words, given any diagonal matrix whatsoever with any 3 real entries on its diagonals, there always exists a polynomial of degree at most 2 such that when you apply that f to A, you will get that uh, that given diagonal matrix. Okay. In other words, every diagonal matrix can be obtained by applying polynomials to this particular diagonal matrix. Okay. And again, there is nothing too sacred about this diagonal matrix. Any diagonal matrix with 3 distinct entries would have done the job. Right? Because for polynomial interpolation, recall what you need is x1, x2, x3 to be 3 distinct numbers. y1, y2, y3 could be you know equal. There is no harm there. So, what we have really done is to show that if you start with any diagonal, and diagonal matrix with 3 distinct entries, you can obtain every other diagonal matrix by just by applying some polynomial to that diagonal matrix. Okay? So, I sort of encourage you to you know work out a few more examples, you know play with this a little bit more maybe with somewhat higher dimensions and so on. I'd like to do is uh, again start out with the following example take a 2 cross 2 matrix A which just has 0, 1, 0, 0 and again think in terms of polynomials. So, let us compute A squared for instance and here is what one finds that squaring this matrix just produces a matrix of zeros. Okay. So, this is somewhat uh, counterintuitive to what one is used to when we sort of take squares of real numbers and so on. <coughs> if you have a real number, if A were instead a real number which is not 0, so observe A here is not the 0 matrix, so A is clearly a non 0 matrix, but the square of A nevertheless could be 0. Okay? So, matrices in this sense behave very differently from how real numbers would behave. Uh, a matrix could be non 0, but its square could be 0. Okay? So, again, uh, this sort of suggests an extension which is you start with an arbitrary matrix and try and do something similar, try and apply some polynomial to it and try and make it 0. Okay? So, the question really is, so again let us do it by example, sort of a generalization of this here just squaring the matrix was enough to produce a 0. More generally can you find polynomials which when applied to a matrix will produce the 0 matrix. Okay? So, let us just take, so I will take a matrix and for now an arbitrary matrix of size 2. A, B, C, D and ask the following question, can we find a polynomial of degree at most 2, Let's give it a name say a polynomial f of degree at most 2 such that f applied to this matrix would give you the 0 matrix. So, arbitrary 2 cross 2 matrix, what polynomial should one apply to it to get 0? Well, more importantly, does there exist such a polynomial? So, the preceding discussion has answered this question in a special case. So, observe if A is diagonal, then we know what to do. So, case 1, if uh, whatever the off diagonal entries B and C are 0, Okay, so, if A is A 0 0 D, then we can sort of use the same sort of thing we did before. Uh, what polynomial should we apply to A in order to make both these entries zeros? Well, you just take the polynomial x minus A times x minus D. So, let us do the following. Let us define a polynomial f of x to be x minus A times x minus D. So, that is a quadratic polynomial. So, degrees 2 and what property does it have? Well, if you plug in 
x equals a or x equals b, it would just give you 0. Okay. So, it would make both these entries, uh, it, it would kill both these entries. So, now if you apply f to the matrix A, as we just said before, what it will give is just f of A, f of B on the diagonals, 0 cells. Okay. And since by design, these two diagonal entries are actually 0, so what you do get is the 0 matrix. Okay. So, this general problem that I just posed, at least in a special case, we know how to attack this. If it were a diagonal matrix, then we would just use the polynomial x minus a times x minus b. Okay. But of course, the question is will that work if you have maybe off diagonal entries, say if you have b and c being non-zero, would we still be able to find a polynomial? Okay. So, that is the general case. So, let us say case 2 is, well, this is just the general case. It also subsumes case 1 if you wish. So, A, B, C, D, that is your matrix A. So, question is can I find a polynomial f? Okay. So, let us do the following. As a first approximation, let us use the same polynomial that worked in the diagonal case. Okay. So, let us do the following. Let us guess as our first guess, initial guess. Let us just take the same polynomial and see what happens. So, we just take x minus a, x minus d and this is, so let me just expand this out, it is x squared minus a plus d x plus a d and let us compute f of a and let us see if, well, let us see what we get. So, let us compute f of a. So, what is f of a? It is a squared first minus a plus d a. So, I need to square a plus a d times the identity. So, squaring a of course, requires writing out the matrix a with itself and sort of carrying out the matrix multiplication in full. So, let me just write out uh, maybe some of the terms. This looks like a squared plus b c. So, you, you should certainly check that this calculation is okay. A B plus B D C A plus D C and C B plus D squared. So, that is just the square of A and the second term in which you multiply each entry of A with A plus D looks like, so it is minus uh, A squared plus A D. a b plus d b, a c plus d c and a d plus d squared. And then the final term is a d times the identity. So, that is just a d a d with zeros on the back. Okay. So, I just wrote this out in full. So, you can sort of check your matrix multiplication as well. So, that is the, the complete answer, but now there is a lot of simplification that takes place. So, what I need to do is for instance, I take the top left entry a squared plus b c minus a squared plus a d plus a d. So, I need to take those three terms and combine them and see what I get. So, for instance, here I can already see some cancellation. So, a squared for instance minus sign with an a squared will cancel. So, I have minus a d here, which will cancel with the plus a d on the other side. Okay. So, similarly here I have a b and I have a b in the second term, which will cancel each other out. I have b d, which will again cancel off the b d. So, similarly here uh, c a plus d c, that is the same terms, they cancel each other off. And here I have c b plus d squared, so the d squared will cancel the d squared and the AD cancels the AD. Okay, so, I just did this a little quickly. You should check this out uh, somewhat more leisurely. So, this finally leads to the following answer. I am only left with two surviving terms. There is a BC and a BC okay, with 0 cells. 
okay. So, which means that well our initial guess is not quite correct because if I apply this polynomial f of x to the matrix A, I do not get the matrix 0 right because I have assumed of course, that B and C may be non-zero right. So, I would get the 0 matrix if you know at least 1 of B or C is 0, but here unfortunately uh, it is not. So, what do we do? Well, this is still not too bad because observe that the answer that we obtain finally is actually just B C times the identity matrix. Okay. So, the polynomial f applied to A just produces B C times the identity. So, it is easy to see how to modify this. We just subtract the B C term as well. So, now here is the, the final answer that is suggested by what we just did. You take f of x but from that you sub you subtract off a bc okay so subtracting a bc from f of x means what well this is x squared minus a plus dx plus ad minus a bc and now observe that our calculation said that if you apply uh, a well if you apply g to a then well the first the application of f to a produces b c times identity and that is going to be cancelled off by the b c term that we now included. So, this is in fact going to give you zeros as required. Okay. So, what we have managed to do here is to find for the most general scenario a polynomial which will make the given matrix 2 cross 2 matrix a into a 0. Okay. So, now here are a couple of points worth noting. So, note that if you take you know take this polynomial g of x that we just wrote out and look at its constant term. So, meaning just look at what happens when you put x equal to 0. So, observe that if you take the polynomial g and you put x equal 0 this just gives you a d minus b c. Okay, so, the constant term is a d minus b c and that is of course, familiar to us that is we have seen it in a few other contexts already it is what we call the determinant of the matrix. So, for the 2 cross 2 matrix the determinant a d minus b c is exactly what seems to appear as a constant term of this matrix of this polynomial and in fact, the, the entire polynomial itself can be obtained in the following fashion. Okay. So, observe in fact, here is the, so the remember here is here is a b c d that was the 2 cross 2 matrix a. Now, here is a procedure which will allow us to get the entire polynomial g of x. You subtract x from both diagonal entries. Okay. So, I have taken the matrix A and done something to it. So, this is the matrix A from which I have done uh, the following. I have subtracted x times the identity matrix. Okay. The effect it has is of making both diagonal entries A minus x and D minus x. So, I have taken this guy and now if you compute the determinant of this new matrix. So, already observe a, b, c, d are real numbers and x's of course, are not numbers anymore they are just symbols, but recall we said before that the nice thing with having matrices or vectors and so on is that you can put any entries you want as long as there is a sensible notion of addition and multiplication of those entries. Okay, you do not always need those entries to be numbers necessarily, they could be other kinds of things such as you know variables like x and so on, which we know how to add and multiply together. Okay. So, polynomials are perfectly fine as entries of matrices and so now if you compute the determinant of this resulting matrix here, the matrix A minus x i, what we get is well the, the diagonal entries now are A minus x and D minus x. So, it is a times the uh, I mean a minus x times d minus x minus b c. So, that is the definition of the determinant and observe this is exactly well I can switch this I can call it x minus a x minus d. So, this is exactly x squared minus a plus d x plus a d minus b c. In other words it is exactly the polynomial g that we constructed. Okay. So, this polynomial g is in fact the determinant of a minus x i. So, that is the key fact that we have just realized and this is one of the somewhat remarkable theorems concerning matrices or on polynomials applied to matrices. So, this is 
goes by the name of the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So, let me not write this out in full this the thing that we just said g of x equals determinant of. So, I will just say it in this context. So, g of x which is just determinant of a minus x i So, in general what the Cayley Hamilton theorem says is no matter what matrix A you take it could be of uh, any size n cross n for instance. From that matrix you subtract off x times the corresponding identity matrix ok. So, which means all diagonal entries must now be subtracted and an, an x must be subtracted from all the diagonal entries and then you take the determinant of the, the resulting matrix. The polynomial that you so obtain the polynomial in x will have the property that when you apply that polynomial to the matrix A it will kill the matrix it will make the matrix 0 ok. And we have just seen the 2 cross 2 proof of the Cayley Hamilton theorem if you wish ok. So, this is pretty much all we had to say about matrices.